metadata has been on my mind for a while. This is the digital information that goes with your pictures and you can edit it and save it. I recently had someone reach out to me and she wrote, I have scanned hundreds of family photos and am now in the process of naming the files and adding metadata. But it's become an overwhelming and daunting task. She writes, I have just realized too that when I share my photos with relatives, they may not have a photo viewing program where they can see the information that she shared. This is a legit problem and metadata can be like, eh. So I'm here today to give you a quick overview and how to tackle it and make sure that the work you put into it will be enjoyed and preserved as time goes by. My name is Molly and I'm the owner of Pixology. I'm a photo estate planner and I help people go from being overwhelmed and unsure to being confident and motivated to get their family photos saved so that they can enjoy them today and share them with everyone that they want and make sure that the memories are preserved for future generations. Now metadata is frustrating for some people and others may not even know what it is. In a quick nutshell, metadata is the information that goes with your digital pictures and it's one part of the whole photo preservation process. If you are challenged with saving pictures, whether they're printed or digital, I'd love to talk with you. I do offer an eight week course which goes way into the nitty gritty of all of this and I've got a link below where you can schedule a time and learn more about that. Now, <laughs> metadata. Today, what we're gonna talk about first is I'm gonna tell you what metadata is, what you need to know about it. And then I'm gonna share four ways that you could edit the metadata. And then third, I'm gonna talk about how you can make sure that people can view the metadata and enjoy the stories that you're trying to preserve so many people are out there struggling with their pictures. You are not alone if you're one of those people. If you could give this video a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to this channel if you have found it useful, that way more people will learn about the importance of saving pictures and that there are easier ways to do some of this stuff. Now, we're gonna dive into the first thing I talked about and that is what you need to know about metadata. And we're talking about photo metadata, okay? There's, I think, like three pieces of information that it includes. First, it, it describes the photo, when it was taken and what it was taken with. It talks about the rights and the administration of an image. So sometimes digital pictures are copyrighted if you have a professional photographer take those pictures. That information is embedded in that photo with the digital metadata. Metadata also includes things like the size of the photo and the dimensions, what camera took it, all of that kind of goes into the photo information. Even if you scan a picture, the metadata will tell you what kind of scanner most likely you use to, to capture the image. Lastly, the metadata also includes those individual pixels that make up your digital photo. So there's a lot packed into a photo's metadata. You can't just look at a digital picture like this and see the photo's metadata. You actually need a viewer, some sort of program or app to view the metadata. So I have an example here where I have a, a thumbnail of a picture and on the left hand side, it's being viewed through the PC File Explorer and I've right clicked on the picture to get its properties. And you can see it includes the file name, the file type, the size, the dimensions. That's all metadata, all those little fields. And then on the right hand side, the File Explorer's equivalent program on a Mac is the Finder. And when you control click on a picture, you can get the info for a photo. That side shows a whole lot less information. So this is a prime example of how two programs can show something very differently. 
Now, there is one organization that has attempted to provide a standard, and it's IPTC.org. This stands for the International Press Telecommunications Council, and they developed the IPTC photo metadata standard to help news agencies, photographers, photo agencies, libraries, museums, and other related industries all work with the same digital information. But to be honest, I haven't found this standard to be much help as I think software developers don't necessarily feel compelled to follow the standard. So that's a little bit about metadata and now I'm going to talk about four ways that you can edit the metadata. It really matters how you add the metadata to your picture. And it matters how you think people are going to view it in the future. Sometimes when you add metadata, you actually have to export the photo with the metadata from the program you were working with or download the photo with the metadata attached from an internet site or a cloud storage site. I am going to be working with a photo here that is of my grandmother as a two-year-old on the farm with her parents back in 1914. I'm going to add a description and a couple tags just to show you how this works. We are starting off with Windows File Explorer. In this screenshot, you can see that I have my grandma's photo selected and the details pane is visible on the right-hand side. If you don't know how to get to this, look at the top row, the ribbon of options. I'm in the View tab, and I have the Details pane selected. So that's how I'm able to actually work and add the metadata in the Details pane. So when we go to the next slide here, you can see now that I've added tags, it says Frank Ostrusky, Helen Cordes, and then Marianne Ostrusky is cut off. So frustrating because you can't see the whole list of tags. And then obviously the comments are completely cut off because I, I wrote on the farm in Pulaski, Wisconsin. My grandma was two years old or something like that. It's all cut off. This is no fun way to actually view the metadata, okay? So you might think, all right, let's double click on the picture, which does launch the Photos app on a PC. In the Photos app, there are three dots up at the top right corner of the screen. You can see it right below the X to close the window. Those three dots, when you click it, you can select File Info, which makes the left-hand side show. So you can see the name of the picture. We have a date taken, which was really 1914, so I'm not sure why it's showing 22. And then we don't see the tags or the comments or the descriptions. So that's pretty unsatisfying. We know we can edit the metadata in Windows File Explorer, but it's not real easy to view the information. Next, I'm going to talk about on a Mac, the Apple Photos app. So on a Mac computer does have some ability to work with pictures. So here I have the photo and I've right-clicked or control-clicked in Apple Photos to get the info for that picture. And you can see there is an add a caption and add a keyword. Those are different words than what we heard before, okay? So I'm going to add the caption and the keyword. And you can see now it actually is pretty nicely visible when I'm in the Apple Photos app and I have clicked on getting the info information for it. So maybe not as easy for other people in your family to get to this view. You can export the picture from Apple Photos, but you have to make sure to select the um, title and keywords and caption to be exported. So you can see here in this little screenshot that those are checked off and then you click export and then you tell it where you want your picture to save. So here we have the photo on my desktop and I've right click or control clicked to get the info on it. Now look at that, the tags field is empty and the comments field is empty, which 
is is true in Apple Photos, we were working with keywords and captions. Those may be attached to this picture, but we can't view it in the Mac Finder. So again, rather frustrating, okay? I gotta move on to something else. <laughs> Some of you who have been on my channel know that I like to recommend MyLeo. I think it's a great photo manager program. And right now we're looking at the picture and we can see in the info side there on the right hand side that I could add a caption and keywords there as well. So in the next view here, you can see I've added the, the caption and I've added keywords. So that works well. But in order for someone to see this work, they would have to have <laughs> my computer with Mylio on it to view it, right? So we have to export this picture as well. And when you export from Mylio, you can definitely uh, click on the metadata and add the pieces of information that you want to see. So I added the camera exit, the caption, and keywords there. And then you click export and it ends up somewhere on your computer, wherever you've designated. All right, so the woman who emailed me about her family situation mentioned that she was using Lightroom Classic. And Kirsten, I thank you so much for sharing the question because it really spurred me on to get this video together for people. So Kirsten uses Lightroom Classic, which is never a program I recommend for beginners or people who um, have not a lot of time to devote to their pictures. But I wanted to include it in the video as another example. So in Lightroom Classic, you have to import the picture in, okay? We can see the metadata panel on the right-hand side about halfway down. And in that area, we can add a caption, and then above it is where the keywords are. I did uh, add the, the caption, and I added the keywords. And then I went to change the capture date, because it's not 1922. And I, whatever I did there brought up these four gray boxes at the top, the date, camera, lens, and label, which I'm sure are all important things to know about if you care. But I, I don't, and I couldn't figure out how to turn those off. So uh, that's why they're still in the picture. Anyway, I added the metadata. And then, in order for anybody to view this, of course, it has to be exported. So I clicked the export under the file menu, and then I had to scroll down in the options to get to metadata and make sure that it would be included on export. So that, that worked well. <laughs> And if you really like to use a complicated program, um, I think Lightroom Classic has a lot of features that might be of interest to you. But for some of us, we like a little more simpler approach, okay? So my fourth option for editing metadata is Forever. And Forever is permanent storage, it's in the cloud. And when you upload your pictures into Forever, you can edit the metadata and they have very simple fields, okay? So here we are, we're looking at this picture. I've uploaded it to forever and on the right hand side, I can edit the information, all right? And I can add a description and tags. So I do that. And there is the tags and the information. It's really actually visibly nice to look at. I can even favorite it. And the date taken was right already, but you, I could have edited that as well. Forever is the only program I know of that when you change the metadata in it, when you share that link with someone, they're going to see exactly what you did. When you download from Forever, it does prompt you to download it with the updated metadata. So that's, again, getting the metadata to stick is important if you want to share the digital file with someone who will store it in their own photo collection. That was the fourth solution. I wanted to point out that uh, 
Google is not a place to edit metadata. And I normally wouldn't have brought it up, but someone mentioned that she was spending a lot of time adding descriptions in Google. So I want to just show you this picture here. This is a screenshot from Google. I've uploaded the picture there. And you can see in the Info tab, I have added the description. There is no place to add tags, all right? But I am able to edit the date it was taken. So that's good if we're viewing this in Google, all right? The problem is, is when you download the picture, none of that comes down with it. And I'll show you here. This is my downloads folder, and the picture is in there. And you can see in the details pane, it has the original date taken and the comments aren't there. So for those of you who are editing metadata in Google, you're going to want to rethink this uh, strategy for sure. So those are the ways that you can edit metadata. The third thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is how will people view the metadata you've added to your photos? The million dollar question, how are people going to view the metadata? And I wish I could say that the technology and the, the big tech companies had come together and there was a standard way for this to happen. But there's too many variables. We have all sorts of programs out there and we have all sorts of solutions. We have all sorts of technology skills. Think about the family you have who still are looking to get pictures on a CD that they can put into their old computer. So I've come to the conclusion and believe me, I, I have looked and investigated you know, over the course of 10 years, trying to help people save their pictures. Forever is the only option that I've seen that I have any confidence that the pictures will be there and the stories that you've added in the description and the people and the places that you've added in the tags. Forever is the only place that I have any confidence that information will be around in generations to come. Forever is also the simplest way to edit the metadata. So for those of you who are looking for the fastest path, the simplest path to save your pictures and add this information, Forever is a great option. And it's easy to share the pictures. You can share a link right from the, the browser on your computer or from the app on your phone. You can also post it to Facebook and when people click it, they'll go and see the photo and the information's right there telling them the story of what's going on. So we like Forever at Pixology for a number of reasons. And if you want to try it out, we have a, a link below. We are ambassadors. So the link is for a complimentary two gigabyte account and a $20 coupon. Now, for some people, they still want to be able to edit the metadata on their computer. And right now, the only thing I'm pretty certain about is how you can edit the metadata in File Explorer and have that upload to Forever directly. So here's a quick uh, breakdown of what you want to edit in File Explorer so that it uploads uh, seamlessly to Forever. We have the date taken, the tags, and the comments, okay? You change those things and then you upload your picture to Forever and it works. Do not edit the title of the picture, okay? When you edit the title, that overwrites the description and you lose that work. It will still be on your computer, but you won't be able to see it in forever. And for others of you, if you like the idea of using Mylio, I definitely think that's a powerful photo managing program. And I've got a link below for a 25% off the first year subscription. All right. Do you feel up to speed on metadata now, or do you just feel like you've slowed down? Either way, I want you to know I'm here for you. If you have questions or thoughts, leave them in the comments, and I, I'd love to hear what you have to say. And your thoughts or suggestions might help someone else who's also trying to figure out the metadata journey. Thank you so much for joining, and we will see you the next time.